2014 continues. Welcome back in, everybody. Ed Berliner along with J.D. Hayworth, the entire team. Thanks for joining us. You Decide 2014 has reached the point where we can say that as long as the numbers hold, everything stays as it is right now. The Republicans have indeed gone over the top, and they will now control the Senate. Let's go ahead and look at two very important races that we have just had a chance to go ahead and call as far as the numbers are concerned. First, let's go ahead and begin in North Carolina, where the Associated Press has reported that Tom Tillis has won the Senate race over Kay Hagan. The numbers right now, 49% to 47%. Again, that coming from Associated Press. Here comes the one that we have been following in the last hour or so, and we have been watching. Let's check out the Iowa numbers as well, because that's a number that is being called by ABC and several other networks are now calling it. But ABC reports that Joni Ernst will win and has won this race in Iowa. So as far as we are concerned right now, according to all the numbers, the way it all sits, Republicans have indeed gained control of the Senate. Uh, I know that you want to come in on this. Uh, do you want to give him a chance to gloat first and basically tell us that he was exactly right before you do that? Well, you know, it's no brag, just fact. It is. Our friend Dick Morris standing by in Philadelphia. Let's let's let Dick talk about. Dick, you told us keep an eye on North Carolina, and that's true. And now look what's yeah. going on in New Hampshire. Well, uh, it looks to me, New Hampshire, you don't know about yet. It's too close. But we've got a nine-seat majority, nine-seat pickup. It'll be 54-46 in the Senate. Uh, we've got seven that we've won. Uh, we're going to win Alaska. We'll be eight. We're obviously going to win Louisiana. We won the first primary, for God's sakes, when nobody thought we would. So it'll be a nine-seat pickup. I want to call attention to some of the governorships because that's very significant. Republicans have won in Illinois, defeating Democratic governors. Maryland, a core blue state. Uh, Colorado, uh, another blue state. Arkansas, uh, and probably Massachusetts, the ultimate blue state. Um, and whereas going into the election, it was 29-21, Republican over Democrat, uh, we lost uh, Pennsylvania. But now it'll be 33-17, Republican. The other, two other things I think are important. One is that the, we're finding that, the, and this is significant for Hillary, that people with famous last names uh, have, were obliterated in this election. Uh, going into the election, there were nine senators who were serving in the body basically with last names of previous senators. Mark Pryor has lost, Marie Landro, whose, mother, whose father was the mayor of New Orleans, is about to lose. Um, you have uh, Udall in Colorado, who's going to lose, who's lost. Uh, Begish in Alaska will probably lose. His dad was the congressman. And, um, and Drew Rockefeller from West Virginia retired. So you have four left of the nine. The last point I want to make is Shankoff was really right when he spoke about the Reagan Democrats now becoming, again, Reagan Republicans. And I think the key issue there that is due more than anything else moving the numbers tonight is immigration. I think that American blue-collar workers and middle-income families have come to the correct conclusion that when you admit masses of immigrants into the United States, the wage competition makes it impossible to move your income up, and it stagnates wages in this country. And the income inequality issue, which was the core of Obama's message, has now flipped with immigration to become a Republican issue, not a Democratic issue. And when we consider that Obama is about to do three things in the next two weeks, uh, one is he's going to issue an executive order ending deportations, all hell is going to break loose. Uh, secondly, everybody's going to get new rate increases on Obamacare, and probably five million cancellations We'll be right back where we were a year ago with everyone going crazy over that. And thirdly, I think our offensive against ISIS will prove in un unable to win without ground troops, and we'll be back in a third war in Iraq. Those three things coming on top of tonight, to me, decisively move the odds of 2016 in favor of the Republicans. Remember this, other than Reagan in 88, not a sing 86, not a single can't party that lost the sixth year midterms has been able to win the presidency. 
Truman lost it in 50. Eisenhower was elected in 52. Uh, Democrats uh, won in 58. Kennedy was elected in 60. The Republicans came back in 66. Nixon was elected in 68. Democrats swept in 74. Carter was elected in 76. Reagan is the exception. He lost in 86, but Bush still won. Dukakis had something to do with that. Clinton had a tie in 1990, um, in 1998, and the election was a tie, <laughs> the Gore election. And in 2006, the Democrats swept Congress, and of course, Obama won the presidency two years later. The net effect of tonight is to make it very, very much more likely that the Republicans win in 16. Well, All right, Dick Morris, we appreciate your time. Unfortunately, we're up against the clock right now. You got to ride in New Hampshire, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. A couple of quick notes here before we take the break. Republican Brian Sandoval has won the governor race in Nevada, and Republican Bruce Rauner has won the governor's race in Illinois as well. More numbers, more of the results to come your way as we continue right here on Newsmax with You Decide 2014. The midterms, You Decide 2014, will be back in just a moment.